Hello, Hofstra fans. My name is Stephen Gortzov, the Associate Director of Athletics for Communications here at Hofstra University. I'm excited today to be joined by two special guests, head men's basketball coach Joe Mihalik. Welcome, coach. Thanks, Stephen. It's great to be here and talk about basketball. And Mark Wiener, the sports director of the greatest station in the United States, WRHU. Welcome, Mark. Thank you, Stephen, for the kind words. Uh, well, today's an exciting day because we're here to release the non-conference schedule for the Hofstra men's basketball team. And um, we'd like to start with an opening thought, Coach. Uh, Coach, 12 games on the non-conference schedule, four home, four away, four neutral. Without getting to specifics just yet about the schedule, what were your overall thoughts on putting together a schedule like this? Well, uh, you know, first the first thing is that everybody should know just how hard it is to put a schedule together. And, um, you know, it's not the, I always say this, it's not the most important thing that we do as college basketball coaches, but I think it's the hardest thing. Your recruiting's more important. What you do on the floor every day is more important. Your game's more important. But it is awfully difficult to put a schedule together because, you know, if your team gets good, nobody wants to play you. Uh, you know, if uh, nobody wants to travel, nobody wants to start at your place, you know, so it's it's a challenging thing. So it, it took longer than ever. In all my years, it took longer than ever. We didn't wrap our schedule up till August is when we finally wrapped our schedule up. But uh, but it's finally done now, and I think it's it's what this team needs. Every year is different for your team. I think this team needs to be challenged. I think we're going to get challenged uh, and get us, uh, as I always say, the non-conference schedule is supposed to sharpen your teeth for league play, and I think this schedule, this non-conference schedule will do that. Yeah, it's a really interesting breakdown with the four home, four away, four neutral. Was that a thought in your mind to break it up like that, or did that just kind of play out with the, you know, with obviously the major tournament being the Paradise Jam being three neutral games? Well, I mean, the perfect formula is to, I mean, do what Syracuse does and have every game at home, but, uh, you know, it doesn't always work out that way. Um you know, if you can have a few more at home than, than away, that's that's good. But, you know, uh, as long as you don't have eight on the road, none at home, and, and four neutral games, I think then you're you're probably accomplishing all the things you want to. Well, let's get right into it, Coach. We'll start with uh, the season opener, November 13th at home versus Canisius. Uh, kind of a new opponent to Hofstra at school. We haven't faced them in, since 1988-89 season. Uh, you're... Th your thoughts and all an old uh, an old opponent of yours from your Niagara days. Yeah, I mean that's the big rivalry there, Niagara and Canisius. So it's 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 a team or at least a, a program I'm familiar with. The team's different now because they've changed over the last few years. But it'll be an exciting night. There's nothing like opening night. There's just nothing like opening night. There's months of waiting. There's off season conditioning. There's a long uh, six weeks of practice before you get there, so it'll be an exciting night. It'll be a great night. I know our guys will be excited, and, and because of that niagara Canisius rivalry, I know Wanya Green and Amin Tanksley uh, will be excited to play that game. Mark, uh, your thoughts? Uh, second straight year with a doubleheader for uh, the programs as the women will open with Navy that night. Uh, your thoughts on the uh, opening night uh, schedule? I mean, I remember from last year when women's played that uh, overtime game against CCSU, they end up losing. But the, just the uh, atmosphere in that building, of anticipating both games coming up, and it's just amazing to see the MAC so packed and ready for basketball uh, every single year. And it's really going to be exciting to finally get this season started after all the talk I'm sure we're going to have before the season. Uh, so game one is on that Friday night, and then Hofstra turns around and they'll play their second straight game at home to open the season with a – local rivalry against Malloy College located in Rockville Center. Coach, uh, your thoughts about adding a school from that level uh, to the schedule? Well, I think it's a great idea. I think it's great for the program. It's great for the community. I mean, there are a lot of uh, good programs in the area. Uh, Malloy, CW Post, uh, Adelphi. There's so many good teams in the area. And I think it's, it's kind of neat that we would reach out to them and, and, and bring them here and host them in a game. And it gives, uh, gives everybody a chance to, to see the local teams. It gives them a chance to come over and play in a Division One setting. And I think it's going to be a great night. I really am excited about that. I think it should be a really fun night. Uh, Mark, uh, any, any knowledge in that uh, area? Have you uh, seen Malloy at all, or do you know anything about their program? 
I have. I've broadcasted a couple of games for them in the past uh, for their website. And, you know, uh, they're playing three games in three days to start their season. So it's going to be a nice matchup for the Pride as, you know, you're going to face a, a tired D2 team. It should just be one of those games where, you know, it's not going to say – you're not going to say it's exhibition. You're not going to say it's practice. But it should be a fairly easy uh, win for Hofstra. You're never going to say any game's easy. But uh, a D2 team in their third game in three days should be a, a, a pretty fair – a fairly easy game. I don't know if Coach wants to hear that, Mark, but no, uh, no, no game is easy to Coach Mahalik. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, well, I mean, you got to remember that these guys are going to be – those other two games, I know they're going to care about them, but this is going to be their Super Bowl. And then and that's yeah. cool. I think that's really neat. That's a good thing. This will be – you know, if they were to go, then they're not going to because uh, they're very well coached and it's a, it's a very good program. But if they were to go 1-25 and and their one win was against Hofstra, they would say they had a great season. So we got, we're going to have to be ready for that, uh, for, for the excitement that they're going to, that's going to come from their locker room. Uh, Coach, so that's the end of the first two games of the year. Uh, the, the next three are probably the most exciting part of the schedule for the 2015-16 season as you'll head to the U.S. Virgin Islands taking part in the Paradise Jam. Uh, Coach, you open against Florida State on national television, CBS Sports Network. Uh, these are, I guess, the fun parts to making a schedule when you can when you can get in a tournament of this nature and play an opponent of this level, right? Well, without a doubt, and, and, and the credit goes to Jeff Hathaway for having the vision to, to get us into this tournament and, and, and help us secure a spot in a prestigious field, prestigious tournament. Um, you know, very, very good teams. The field is terrific. And, you know, when we started out the broadcast, I mentioned that every year is different for every team. And, and this year's team has a lot of veterans and uh, – there's going to be high expectations. We know that. We know that. And so we do want to challenge our guys and put them through a great experience. And, and they're going to get that in this tournament because, you know, as you said, we, we open up against Florida State. Uh, then the next day we will play either DePaul or South Carolina, which will also be uh, a real difficult challenge. And then the final night we could play anyone from Tulsa to, I guess the other side of the bracket is Tulsa. Ohio, U, Indiana State, and Norfolk State. So we'll play one of those three, one of those four teams on the third night. So it, it makes for a great weekend of basketball. Uh, Mark, uh, your your thoughts on that? Uh, uh, you're not only a broadcaster at Hofstra, but you're also a fan of the program and a student at Hofstra. How exciting is that for like a fan base and a student at Hofstra to know that your school, which has high expectations coming into the year, is going to play a school like a Florida State? like a possibly a South Carolina, a DePaul, an Ohio. Yeah, the, I mean, fans of this program are chomping at the bit to potentially say, oh, we upset Florida State uh, out of the ACC. And, I mean, they're a very good team. They bring back 87% of their scoring, third-ranked recruiting class in the nation, and obviously they compete in the ACC, which is a higher conference in the CAA. And just all of the teams in this uh, tournament pool for the Virgin Islands tournament are – incredibly good, incredibly high-powered, and you know what, you can, as a hop team, as the, as the Hofstra Pride, can go out, make some noise, and say, you know what, we're here to compete, not just in the CAA, but on a national level, and put yourself in good positioning once it comes time for uh, postseason selections to be made. Uh, well said. Uh, Coach, uh, you're going to, obviously, the most important thing is there is the three games uh, during this stretch, but, you know, it's also time for for your team to experience something that they usually don't get to experience on a basketball road trip. Uh, you can allow your team to kind of, you know, see the area a little bit and the, do a little touristy type stuff. Uh, I would think very little of that, to be honest with you. I mean, it's, <laughs> you know, it's a business trip. It really is. And it's, uh, it'll be a great setting and I'm sure guys will enjoy being there, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be going down there to play basketball and, you, know, you people are people don't know they don't understand how li you you do because you travel with us and Mark you know as well because you travel with us but there's very very little free time where, when somebody could actually maybe it'd be a little free time to go out and uh, you know whatever take a little walk on the beach or, or for near a beach I don't even know I think we're near a beach right but uh, there's very little free time so well, it'll be a business trip we're gonna go down there and try to do something special. Well, that concludes the three games at uh, the Paradise Jam. As Coach mentioned, Hofstra will open against Florida State and then play uh, South Carolina or DePaul on the second, in their second game, and then their third game will be uh, Ohio, Tulsa, Indiana State, or Norfolk State. Um, now, moving on, after Hofstra returns back to the continental United States, uh, they will head north in New York to St. Bonaventure, 
uh, on November 28th. Coach, uh, your thoughts? It's a first of two Atlantic 10 opponents, as we'll reveal the second one shortly, but uh, it's another strong opponent from a strong league. Yeah, I, I said it a couple times already. I, I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but you know we're challenging our guys. We're going to play two Atlantic 10 teams on the road. We're going to go to Bonaventure, and without jumping the gun here, the next one will be at LaSalle. So, but first, Bonaventure, I mean, it's a really tough place to play. The Riley Center, great student support. Uh, they, they, that place helps them win. You know, it's something that we hope we're going to get out of the MAC this year. We're hoping the MAC is going to become a place where it's going to help us get some wins with our student support and fan support because, you know, we certainly do need and rely on and, and count on some great fan support. But the Riley Center gets that night in and night out. They get a great turnout. Uh, it'll be, it's a tough place to play and a and, uh, very, very well-coached team. And as you said already, a team from the Atlantic 10. Uh, Mark, uh, as, Co as we just mentioned, the Atlantic 10 aspect of it, but another road game for the team to kind of get road tested with you know playing in a league that has quite a few road trips on it uh, that are not local. Uh, your thoughts on that game as we've uh, revealed the St. Bonaventure game? I mean, you know, it's always a good thing to kind of get those far road trips. I mean, St. Bonaventure is about six, seven hours away, same as JMU or William & Mary, the same kind of bus trip you'd have to take during conference season. So it's always a good idea to get your team, you know, conditioned for what you're going to have to do once the quote-unquote real season starts. Not that you're not treating the non-conference just as importantly as you're treating the conference, but you know that the goal of the non-conference, as Coach has said a couple of times, is, of course, to get ready for the CAA slate, and that's going to be the most important thing next season. That's a, great, that's a great point, Mark. It really is because uh, you know, I've said that before that you know the, it's not just the teams, but it's the it's the it's the trip itself that that you're going to take. That's going to you know you mentioned William and Mary and James Madison being tough trips, so this will be a good a good chance to get us ready for those games. The eighth game of the year, uh, Coach, is maybe one with the uh, probably as the fan base most excited as Hofstra returns to Madison Square Garden to face Appalachian State as part of a doubleheader. Uh, the game will be 11 a.m. on December 6. Uh, Coach, uh, your excitement level about having your team uh, play at the Garden? Now you skipped LaSalle. I thought you were going to talk about. Uh, you know, oh, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. Because you. That's okay. I mean, it's, you revealed you know, it, so I yeah, skipped ahead of my head. No, that's okay. I thought you were going to talk about your mom and dad being at that game. How, <laughs> we're gonna, right, how we're going to? How we'll get a chance to see your mom and dad? So that's that's all good. Let's go back then. Uh, let's. <laughs> Uh, sorry about that. On uh, December 2nd, Hofstra will head to Philadelphia, my hometown, uh, to face LaSalle. Uh, teams met last year, have met 20 times in their history, so sort of a, a little bit of a rivalry. Um, your thoughts on that game? Uh, again, that's the other A-10 opponent, as we've mentioned. Yeah, you know, and, and it, it would be a little repetitive, but another another chance to get ready for, for league play by playing a good Atlantic 10 team on the road. Uh, I know Wanya and Amin will be excited about that going back to Philadelphia. Colin Carton will be excited, and uh, it should be a fun night. So, uh, you know, we're looking forward to that one as well. Uh, Mark, uh, again, the Atlantic 10 aspect, a team Hofstra just faced recently that beat them at the Max Sports Complex complex last year uh, your thoughts about that game it's you know it's got that game has a little bit of juice to it you know good quality opponent on the road yeah, it's got uh, plenty of juice to it, and I think the most important thing that nobody really mentioned is that's Coach Mahalik's alma mater, and I'm sure he's happy to go back and play there for the first time as a member uh, of the Hofstra Pride. So that's the little extra aspect of that game, the huge storyline, other than you know the rivalry between the two teams and the Philadelphia connections all around the team, as you also have a huge connection uh, to Coach Mahalik. Well, you, know, you know, the first time I ever really helped Hofstra win a basketball game was when I was playing for LaSalle, and we lost to Hofstra, and I held Richie Laurel to about 40 points. So, so <laughs> that's the first time I ever really helped Hofstra as a, as a player at LaSalle. So. <laughs> Little do we know. Uh, now we can move on to the, you know, I jumped the gun. No, uh, we, we can move on to uh, the one that has maybe the fan base very excited. Uh, Hofstra will return to, the, to Madison Square Garden on December 6th, play Appalachian State uh, as part of a doubleheader. Uh, teams also met last year down in, uh, in the Carolinas. Uh, this will be Hofstra's first appearance at the Garden since 2009-10 season. Coach, uh, your thoughts on getting back at the Garden, uh, how hard was it to get back at the Garden, and you know how important is this for this program? 
you know, well, once again, you got to tip your hat to Jeff Hathaway, but because uh, without him, we're not playing in the Garden. Uh, but it is exciting, and there, there's only one Madison Square Garden. There's only one. It's a, it's it's a, it's it's a fabulous place. It's an exciting place to play. It's just you know, you walk in there, you just get the chills. So uh, we we can't wait to get there, and and hopefully we'll do a good job and bring some people to the game. We're going to need our fans to come and support that and, 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 and follow us there so that the people at the Garden will say, wait a minute, you know, it's, it's good to have Hofstra here. They bring their fans. Their fans travel. They're going to be at that game uh, because we'd love to, as much as we're excited about being there, we hope we can do a great job and get, back, get invited back to the Garden. Uh, Mark, uh, again, this kind of goes into the – this. you're also a student, but you're a broadcaster. From your aspect, you know, this isn't all about Hofstra basketball all the time, but, you know, You'll possibly get to broadcast that game. You know, what level of excitement do you have as a uh, student at Hofstra and a broadcaster to, to you know, broadcast a game from the world's most famous arena? Stephen, uh, I'm just going to cut you off there. I will be broadcasting that game. There's no doubt about it. When I found out uh, a while ago, when it was it was leaked by App State, when they released their schedule that we were playing at the Garden, I was uh, incredibly excited because I grew up in that building, living in Queens, going to Knicks and Rangers games all the time. Uh, it's going to be exciting for me as a broadcaster and a student at Hofstra to be able to do that, and that'll actually be the second time I ever call a game at Madison Square Garden. So it's an amazing place, uh, first basketball game for me. So just what it'll do for the program to get that exposure of playing at a building like Madison Square Garden, and just for me personally, it's going to be a great night. Uh, next game on the schedule, uh, after the Appalachian State game, will be another road trip in the state of New York uh, at Siena, another uh, program that Coach is very familiar with from his Mac days. Uh, Coach, your your thoughts on the Saints? Uh, they're, really, they're, they're improving over the last couple of years, and that will be... Uh, as you as you mentioned about St. Bonaventure, it's another program that gets incredible, incredible fan support. Oh yeah, they'll get. I mean, they'll get at least eight thousand people at every game, which is which is a terrific thing for a mid-major school. Uh, always one of the best teams in in the, in the conference, and they should be great fan support. Uh, a team that'll play us for ninety-four feet up and down the floor. Uh, had some great battles with them through the years, whether Fran McCaffrey was coaching or Jimmy Patos was coaching. It's been some, we've had some great battles. And, and uh, you know, once again, we'll rely on the experience at Wanya Green and I mean, Tanksy have had playing in that building to, to let the fellows know that uh, what a great venue it'll be and what the fan support will be like and what it'll be like to play there. It's a great place to play. Mark, I don't know if you've ever been in that area or that game. It's a, it's a school that just gets incredible support no matter – the team's, you know, 30 and 0 or 5 and 25. Um, another way for the team, uh, for a senior-laden team, to get ready for the rigors of CA play, right? Especially, yeah, especially when you go down to places like James Madison. I remember doing that game in late February last year when the place was packed, even though it was a game that didn't really mean much in terms of the standings, but it, it was a, a CAA game and it was packed, and you're going to get that all over the CAA once you go down south. So anytime you can play non-conference somewhere that you know is going to be a lively atmosphere, it's a good thing. And I know for Coach and, and Wanye and Amin, it's another MAC team that you're familiar with. And, Coach, when you were making the schedule, was that something that you wanted to do to get a couple of Mac teams on there that not only you but a couple of players were familiar with. Well, the Siena game was one we always wanted. We we, we actually had scheduled that. Um, geez, a couple of years ago we scheduled the Siena game, knowing that that would be a great game. The Canisius one happened late, and that was happened. Uh, you know, that's more of a coincidence that, that that game would be scheduled, and the fact that they were in the Mac. It's but the Siena game is a great game. Hey, we tried like crazy to get the local teams to play, and. And for one reason or another, it didn't it didn't happen. But we certainly would love to play, you know, all the local teams. I think it's a, it's a natural to be playing those to play to be playing those teams that are that are local. And hopefully, in the years to come, uh, you know, that'll that'll happen. Coach, uh, you, you just kind of mentioned all the local teams. Uh, you've said that you you've had you've struggled obviously because people know how good offshore the expectations of the program are this year. But of the twelve non conference games, eight are in the state of New York. Was there any is that a coincidence, or did you put some thought into that? You know, kind of, you know, allows your guys to maybe, you know, the travel's not as bad uh, during the non-conference, so your guys are ready for the trips to Charleston, Wilmington, uh, JMU, William Mary, stuff like that. Is, is was that a thought? Uh, you know, no, I think that too was just a coincidence, and but I think it speaks to the to the. You know how good basketball is up up and up and down this whole Northeast corridor, not just the state of New York, where scheduling can be uh, shouldn't be too difficult. 
uh, even though it is. It shouldn't be as difficult to find teams that are not too far away. Uh, next game on the schedule, we're now down to the final three of the non-conference schedule, the 10th non-conference game at Stony Brook on December 20th. Uh, Coach, the game was maybe the most exciting of the year last year. Uh, obviously the most exciting win. Maybe second most exciting game other than the uh, William Mary game in the CA Championship semifinals. Uh, your thoughts on that rivalry, which is really amping up because uh, they have an incredible program right now. Yeah, they're really hot. You know they're going to be waiting for us. We were able to – Deion Nesmith was able to knock that jumper down to, to basically to, to win the game with about a second to go. And I'm sure they'll remember that, and they'll be excited to go, and they're going to be a very, very good team. they got everybody back, and they got they also have a junior college All-American that they, that they signed who actually played for them as a freshman, went to Kansas, and was uh, named to, to a junior college uh, All-American team. Uh, and, uh, and he'll be back playing for them. And uh, Ahmad Walker – is his name. And so they'll be as good as they were last year. They're going to be even better this year. So uh, another great test for us. I mean, Mark made a good point. You go to Siena, does it feel like you went to James Madison? Sure, that's a good that's a good one there. And and this will be the same thing. It'll be a great crowd. It'll be a tough venue, but it's going to get us ready for James Madison and William & Mary and Northeastern and UNC Wilmington and, and Towson and all those good teams in our, in our league. Mark, the Stony Brook game r really has not only Hofstra, not only St Stony Brook, fans, but Long Island basketball fans excited. As Coach mentioned, it, it went down to the wire. Hopefully Coach can find a jersey for Dion for this year. You know, maybe he can help us out again. Uh, your thoughts on that game, uh, you know, uh, it has me excited, and I know it has Coach excited. It, it's the type of games you, you play and you're involved in college athletics for. Exactly. I was uh, st standing maybe 20 feet away from Dion when he hit that shot. I was standing right behind the basket, and that place just erupted. I I've never seen the Mac that loud and that packed, at least in my time here at Hofstra University. So it was really a, a fun night last year, and I can only expect that. Yeah, it's on the road, but I think uh, the Hofstra fans will travel very well out to Stony Brook, make the drive there. And it's a rivalry that uh, was renewed last year and should be here for years to come. And, you know, it's a very good team, two very good teams matching up, one that was one game away from the NCAA tournament, another that was two, so it's going to be a good matchup. Did you storm the court, Mark, after uh, Dion hit the shot? I did not storm the court. I was being a reporter and a good journalist. Good, that's good to hear. <laughs> uh, coach, uh, so after the road game at Stony Brook, the short road trip, uh, you return home to finish up the non-conference schedule with two home games, the first of which is against Florida Atlantic on December 22nd. Short turnaround, your thoughts on that game? Um, yeah, you know, they're, they're coached by Michael Curry, a former successful NBA player and coach. And, uh, so there'll be a, they'll, they run a lot of NBA sets and so it'll be, it'll get us ready for, you know, for a team that's going to play the game that way. Um, don't know a whole lot more about them. They come out of Conference USA, which is a very good conference. And, uh, you know, I'm sure we'll be, we'll be ready by December 22nd, but I'm just glad we're getting back into the MAC. I mean, it'll, it'll be a pretty good stretch there between games at the MAC. Uh, so I'll be, it'll be good to see our fans again and uh, be able to just walk out of our locker room and be on the court. Mark, you got any uh, knowledge you could pass along to us on the uh, Florida Atlantic Owls? I mean, they struggled a lot last year. They only went 9-20. and 20. Uh, Five and three is Hofstra all-time against the FAU Owls, so uh, they're a team that may have struggled, but we can assume they would rebuild. They have some freshmen coming in, so it's a program that, it's kind of like Hofstra a couple of years ago. They're on the rebuild. They're trying to get better. So it's never going to be a game that you just look past. It's going to be a game that you're going to get ready for and and try to win as if you're playing any team in this non-conference. You just don't know exactly what FAU is going to bring this year. Coach, so then you'll break, take a little short break. Uh, maybe the guys can you know get their bodies right uh, for the Christmas holiday. And then the final non-conference game of the year will be again at the MAC against Sacred Heart, uh, the Pioneers. Um, your thoughts on the Pioneers, first meeting since uh, your first season, 2013-14. And we lost the game, so that's 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 enough for me right there. I'm anxious to play it. They came in here, again, very well coached, scrappy. They had really good guards, shot the ball well, and uh, they embarrassed us on our home floor. So we uh, we kind of owe them, and I know uh, I know our guys will all remember that game. So it'll be a good good game to play. Perfect coach speak there. I bring up the game, and the, first, the only thing you mention is – we lost to them last time, so that's <laughs> fully what we expected. Uh, Mark, uh, at that point, you know the the rigors of the non-conference schedule with the un you know unusual schedule. You're not you know it's not a like the CA schedule or set days. 
We'll be finishing up your thoughts on that final game there. It's going to be a game that you're just going to want to get some, have some good mojo going into conference season. It'll be uh, that and then probably a couple of days off, you assume, maybe about a week off, and then the CA schedule will begin, and then you finally get into that set schedule where you know exactly what you're doing, as you mentioned, Stephen. So Sacred Heart is a good team. They're a young team, have some talent. Another one of those teams where you're not really sure how that's going to translate to this year because they're so young. You just have to see what happens earlier on in the non-conference. Coach, as we uh, finish up here in the next couple minutes, uh, so we've now revealed the the entire 12 game schedule: uh, four home, four neutral, four away. Eight of the 12 in New York. Yeah, one final like overall thoughts on this schedule. You know, just I, I say this publicly. Mark thinks we're going to go 12 and 0, just so you know. Uh, but what are your thoughts? <laughs> well, I hope Mark's right. That's my first thought. I hope Mark. <laughs> Right. That would be fine with me, uh, because if that were to happen, it would mean we'd we'd have a lot of great wins. Um, you know, I've said it. I said it in the broadcast already. The the goal is to get ready for that conference play. Get ready for your conference. I mean, we're a one bid league. We want it. We, you know, we talk. You talked about earlier. You mentioned those three games at the Virgin Islands and those three days right there. And I couldn't help but think, wait a minute. When you talk about a three day stretch, you got to talk about the three days in March. And that's when we want to be at our best. And we're hoping these 12 games will get us ready for conference play and then also for those three days in March where you want to be at your best so you can climb up a ladder and cut down some nets. Uh, Mark, uh, some final thoughts from you on the uh, schedule as a whole, uh, the expectations of the program, and uh, where, where House for Men's Basketball is today. Whether I agree that I said that they would go 12 row or not, or not Stephen, <laughs> regardless, uh, the uh, coach hits the nail right on the head. The most important thing is they get ready for conference season, and I think uh, it's a tough schedule. It's a little tougher than last year, which is good because we saw once conference season started last last season, it, it didn't go so well for Hofstra at times. So I think this year you get tested a lot better than you did last year, and it's a schedule that can really get you going uh, for the conference season. That's the most important thing. Whether your records one and 11, which it won't be, Coach, don't worry, you're 12 and 0, you're still going to be, the most important thing is getting ready for conference season. I think the expectations we all know are high for this program. It's just a matter of what's going to happen on the court. Well, I can't thank the two of you enough, uh, Mark from w Mark Wiener from WRHU Sports uh, and head men's basketball coach Joe Mihalik. I thank you both for joining us today as we revealed the uh, schedule for the Hofstra men's, the non-conference schedule for the Hofstra men's basketball program. Hofstra fans, don't forget, you can call the Hofstra Athletics box office for more ticket information and season ticket information at 516-HOFTIXX. I know Coach will want to see everyone in the Max Sports Complex this season, right, Coach? Uh, you know, we, we, we love our fans. They're, they're fabulous. We hope to see more fans this year. It's, you know, like I said earlier, uh, we, we want the MAC to become a, a really tough place to play. We want it to be a place where, you know, our fans are, are, are so good that uh, the other team uh, doesn't want to be here. So if we, can, if we can build that kind of atmosphere, that would be fabulous. Thanks again, Coach, and thanks again, Mark. And uh, we'll chat with you again soon, Hofstra fans. Go Pride.